Hi everyone. Hi everybody. Hello. Hi. <laughs> what a what a fun. Uh, so uh, my name is Nama. Uh, I just finished my PhD from the University of Illinois at Champaign. Uh, then I moved to the University McGill University here in Canada. Uh, I, I, I moved here as a postdoc. Actually, this is my second week. So, uh, because of some visa issues, I couldn't attend the conference. I was I was certainly very interested to meet you, all of you. Uh, I, anyway, uh, so let me now go ahead with my presentation. Uh, give me a second. I need to share the screen, I guess. And can't let, can you see my screen now? Yes. 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 Great. Uh, so what I'm presenting today to you is uh, actually a part of my PhD dissertation. Uh, I studied OpenStreetMap, of course, and this is the title. And if you were in OSM conference in, in Spain, uh, Muki Hagley from University College London, uh, presented the part of this material there, so he was uh, in my committee. Uh, so anyway, let's let's go to the topic directly. Uh, so Yutai Beckler, who is in Harvard, says this new mode of production, the outsourcing, our our the projects like OpenStreetMap, is a puzzle. Uh, if you look at from the traditional uh, economics theory. Why should people invest so much of time and energy when there is no obvious benefit for contributors than uh, free riders? Uh, and the Michael Goodchild, who is in uh, GI Science, says, well, understanding the motivation, why people contribute, uh, is at the heart of this whole phenomenon. So these are the things that motivated me to select this uh, topic for my dissertation. And then I said those questions. I, I was interested to understand these questions. Who are the mappers in OpenStreetMap? <clears throat> Why do they map? And what contributory pattern do those mappers demonstrate? Uh, uh, Kate? Yes. OK. So in case if there is any problem to, uh, to hear me, just let me know. I should, I should adjust my uh, volume or whatever. OK? Okay. Okay. Uh, so before I started the study, uh, I wanted to see some similar uh, other phenomena, for example, open source software, Wikipedia, or even uh, even volunteering in general. Why do people invest their time and, and energy in 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 volunteering activities? Why do they contribute in open source software, for example? And I found a, a set of motivational factors. Uh, people are driven there with, by some ethos, uh, their desire for learning, fun, recreation, whatever. So I, uh, I tried to use some of those theoretical frameworks uh, to my study. And I, I looked into the planet file uh, to see actually uh, what contributory pattern, uh, what people are contributing, knows how many times they are contributing kinds of things. Uh, so I would download the data, I analyze, I will be coming to that later. And then I also studied about 300, uh, uh, sorry, 3,000 pages, top pages. Uh, uh, and then I sent a survey to uh, the users in OpenStreetMap. Uh, well, so this is um, what, I, what I find. <laughs> Uh, let me send this thing. So, not surprisingly, you, you, many of you already know, uh, predominantly male, 96% people are mailing open source, uh, open map. And if you look at the, the age, and about 65% people are between 20 and 40 years. But of course, there are some people here, even before 50, interesting. Uh, if you look at education, about 50% people do have at least college degree. 
Uh, you see, there are about 8 percent people even with PhD. That's, I find that interesting. And what is a bit striking is that about 50 percent people do have, you see, uh, some GIS experience. So 26 percent people do have, they say they have more than one year of GIS experience. And we do have people uh, with six to ten years of experience, quite a good number of people. So, so what, what it does to us is that it's not a purely a, a major uh, contributors, as as many people claim. And uh, uh, if you look at our patient, sixty-three percent people are employed, uh, and quite a bit. Uh, experience, 17 percent, so retired people do. And when you look at those employed, the people who are employed, they are mostly employed in the commercial sector. About 71 percent people are in commercial sector. In, in academia, quite a good number of people as well. And they say most of the people are contributing from the home. And some from the office, of course, there are some overlaps. Some contribute both from home and office, which is not surprising. And this number is very interesting. 13% people say they contribute to open, open street map when they are traveling or well, uh, that's, that's interesting. Uh, so, so that gives us a, a general idea about who the mappers are in open street map. And then uh, my interest was to understand why do people uh, contribute. Then I looked into the top place. People say, this guy says, well, I read a book, but I need to use maps in my book, and I cannot pay. So this is what he says. And some people say, OK, pan, I enjoy enormously. Some people say, well, why not you contribute to OpenStreetMap? Because you contribute now, and you can immediately see your contribution. And there is nothing more satisfying than being able to see your, contribu to see your contribution immediately. Uh, and if you look, some others, so people say, well, I am able to map more accurately than existing maps. Uh, I can update it. So they say uh, they, they really value their knowledge about the lo local community. They think they know a lot about uh, their community. They know a lot about the geospatial situation, where they live, where they travel. And they can contribute better than others. Uh, and some people do have some altruistic uh, motivation. Look here. I, um, I see value to contribute something that others can use. And if you look here, some people say, well, I've been living in this little town for many years, but I'm just beginning to discover this, these things when I started mapping in OpenStreetMap, because to map, you need to be able to see things clearly, consciously. And so, so these are some of the uh, motivations people mention in uh, uh, talk pages and uh, and then what I did was based on those I designed a survey. Uh, it was a long survey and I sent it to everybody in in OpenStreetMap. Everybody means those who have contributed. So uh, I I sent my survey about to thirty thousand people. And what they say, this is their perceived motivation. They say the project goal is the most uh, important motivation for them. So the goal of the project, which is uh, the free wiki world map, let us map, let's create a free map for the world. That's the goal of the project. And they say, well, I am motivated because of the goal of the project. And people say, OK, I'll, I like, there are many, many regions in the world where there is no map. And I would like to contribute to open map because those people will be able to use my contribution. And then instrumentality of local knowledge. Well, 
I have learned local knowledge and those no that knowledge is instrumental. I feel it can play an instrumental role in mapping the world. And some people say, well, I'm interested to learn world geography, to learn about the community. And this is self-made. I want to build an application, iPhone application, but I need a free map. So I do have need, that's why I contribute to satisfy my need. And so, so, so off. My family, my friends, uh, they value uh, my contribution in the openness map. That's why I contribute. And my journey motivation, of course, uh, most of the people say, well, 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 I'm not motivated by uh, money. So, so this is what I found from the survey. So I asked people, it was, it was measured in one to seven scale, seven likely scale, and this is what they report. Uh, well, <clears throat> and then what I did was, uh, I divided the mappers into two groups, serious mapper and casual mapper. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm drinking water. <laughs> oh, I thought you won't be able to see me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I divided the mappers into two groups based upon their level of contribution, meaning how many nodes an individual has contributed, how many times this guy has contributed since is join the project. So, so if anybody is above two standard deviation from the average contributor, then this guy is a serious mapper. And others are casual mappers. Then I wanted to, to see whether there is any difference in motivation between those who engage themselves seriously and those who not. Then you see this one, this one, and this one. I find only three motivation, uh, which are different in these two groups. So instrumentality of local knowledge, learning, and monetary. Serious mappers are motivated more by these by the factors. Well, <clears throat> then I developed a set of hypotheses. Well, you guys say you say I'm motivated by present goal. I'm, I'm motivated by altruism, local knowledge. They say these are my our motivational factors. If, if you report this, if you say these are the motivation, then there should be some correlation between the contribution, right? So you should be contributing more notes, you should be staying in the project for a long time, and you should be contributing more frequently if you have higher motivation in this. So I, I was interested to test those hypotheses because uh, I also looked into the planet file and, and I know exactly uh, the, the contribution of each contributor in OpenSmap. So then this is what I found. Look, so in Europe, I divided the contributions at the continent level uh, because there is no point to mix up contributors in Africa and Europe. Europe the project started in Europe in 2004, in Africa a couple of years later. Uh, so let's look at it, Europe. So these are the number of nodes. These are the number of nodes. Uh, and this is the number of days, means uh, how? So, so, so for example, this guy contributed uh, 500 days since he joined the project. But he contributed, say, how many nodes? Uh, less than 1,000, say about 50,000 nodes. That's what this means. So if you look at this diagram, it, it's hard. So most of the people are here, meaning most of the people contribute few nodes and just few number of times. So you have only few people who contribute a, a very high number of nodes and uh, a number of, of them frequently. So this is what this chart says. Uh, so when I looked at the Africa, for example, of course there are few people in Africa, uh, uh, few contributors, but 
But you see a similar pattern. That is interesting. A lot of people, they read few notes, just few times. There are only few people who contribute high number of notes uh, and frequently. Same pattern in Asia, same pattern in, in North America, same pattern in South America. So the number of contributors are different, but pattern is more same throughout the world. That is very interesting. And to summarize this, uh, so when I downloaded the, uh, the, the data in 2009 April, there were about 117,000 uh, registered users in OpenStreetMap, and only 29% of those have ever contributed something to the project. So 71% just registered, contributed nothing. And from those who contributed, 44% people, they just contributed one time. So they come there, contribute a couple of nodes, they disappear, they never come back to the project. And 5% people, they have contributed more than 10,000 nodes. And there are only few people, look at this figure, those who contribute more than 1,000 nodes is only 0.6%. This is interesting. Uh, and then I just put that in a, in a, in a bar diagram so that this contributory pattern is consistent throughout all in any region. So, so this is a one-time contributor. So South Africa do have a little more, but, but, but there is a same pattern. So then now I know what they say about their motivation. When in, in survey they say I'm motivated by uh, and a project goal, altruism, blah, blah, blah. And now I also know exactly the level of contribution, how many times they contributed, how many nodes they contributed. And then I wanted to test those, okay? If you say you are motivated by a, a project goal, and then what I, what I wanted to do is connect this guy's contribution with the reported motivation and see a, a, a relationship. And, and very strikingly, I find only one uh, motivation factor, which is instrumentality of local knowledge, positively correlated with the level of contribution. So those who say, I am motivated by the instrumentality of my local knowledge, I will explain what this means later. These guys contribute more number of nodes, they remain login project, and they contribute frequently. Surprisingly, I did not find positive correlation with their contributions. Positive correlation between other motivations and their contribution. And then I also I was also interested to to see this in uh, if there is any difference with the serious network. And then in addition to the instrumentality of local knowledge, those who are motivated, uh, we say, we do have a little high motivation money, and self view tend to be serious matter. So uh, if somebody is motivated by money, then he's likely to contribute more. He's likely to contribute more doors, he's likely to remain in the project for long is likely to contribute more frequently. So <laughs> this is a bit, bit uh, uh, interesting. I will be very, very interested to hear your comments at the end of the presentation, how you think about those. And stealth view, by the way, is uh, the, the concept is uh, uh, since I started contributing to the open issue map, uh, I have uh, my view of the life. So uh, at the beginning, I feel I'm contributing something important. I am contributing to the world. I am contributing to others. So so this guy, these people start viewing themselves differently. They are more happy. Uh, so uh, anyway, these are the three uh, motivation factors that uh, uh, tend to tell us that people motivate by those these things. Three factors are likely to be uh, engaged in the project more. And here is a very interesting question. 
I ask this question, I'm putting this question as it is. Uh, this was a question asked in the survey, how will the involvement of commercial companies affect your contribution to the project? Because in, in talk pages, there was a lot of discussion going on about the involvement of the pro uh, commercial project. Some people say it's not good, some people say it's good. Then I, I asked this question. They very interestingly, most of the people say, okay, it will not affect my contribution. Uh, only a uh, few people say, 12 percent people say, oh, I will, my contribution will decrease. I will uh, uh, contribute less if you guys involve uh, commercial companies. But most of the people say, okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, and, and actually, only 5 percent people say, I will actually stop contributing <laughs> if, if you involve commercial companies. Okay. Uh, so I should also look at my watch. Uh, so this is the summary. So as, as you saw, the instrumentality of local knowledge seems to be the key motivator uh, in OpenStreetMap. So if you unpack what instrumentality of local knowledge is, so this is what it means. So, well, I want to represent uh, my local area, the community in the map. When I see on the map, and if I do not see uh, my town or my country or my village, I feel very bad. I feel missed representation uh, in cyberspace. So for these people, uh, uh, the, the map, the presence of their uh, local community in map is uh, a kind of identity. So if it is not there in math, so we are not there in cyberspace, so we missed our representation. Uh, and then accuracy of a map. So if uh, uh, when I see on the map, I see a lot of errors. Uh, so why not, to, why not to correct that? Because I have knowledge, I can do that. Uh, so that motivates me. When I see error in the map, that motivates me to contribute. When I do not see my place in the map, that motivates me to contribute. And in self efficacy, I'm competent. So it measures the competence of these people, of these guys. So I'm very competent about the knowledge. I can really make a contribution here. And I enjoy that. So the, the instrumentality of local knowledge uh, measures these, these underlying concepts. And then uh, those uh, who have higher, higher motiv monetary motivation, local knowledge, and self are likely to be serious mappers. Um, so these are the things I found uh, from the survey, but because I also studied talk pages uh, yeah. extensively, and I also did have some open-ended questions in the survey. Some people wrote pages and pages. They have given me lots of information. I don't have time to discuss those in this presentation today. But uh, I'm very curious, actually. I'm actually surprised why those people who say, I am motivated by my altruism. Uh, I like the goal of the project. That's why I'm here. I really like open mapping. I really like uh, the free availability of geospatial data. Uh, I like to learn. And we do have a lot of people who say that. A lot of people who say, I am privileged by those things. But why are those people not able to contribute? Is, is uh, um, uh, a question for open street math, I think. Uh, uh, and when I look into the talk pages and the open question, uh, I also see the social network, those uh, who have personally connect, communicated with other people. Some people say, oh, I have personally communicated with dozens of people, 50 people, 60 people. I know a lot of people personally. These people, uh, they, there seems to be some positive correlation with the contribution. I didn't have a chance to show that in the presentation. This is one thing I, I forgot to mention before. Those who do have dense social network in OpenStreetMap uh, contribute more than others. Uh, that's actually one of my findings. And so people say, well, I really like to contribute. Uh, I'm motivated by altruism. I'm motivated by the project goal. But the system is not very easy to use. So I try to use 
but it's not easy, so I leave. So people say that in 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 open open ended questions, and so this suggests me that uh, we could have some learning materials. Uh, we should have some mechanism to to increase the social network. Although we already do have a mapping party, uh, so uh, in mapping party, uh, people might come there in a mapping party. Uh, it, it, it provides a socialization to a certain extent, but, but it's something worth uh, thinking about. So uh, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. So if you have any question, please write me an email. Uh, so that's it. Any questions? We have one one question. Uh, but give me a second. Let me go to. Uh, okay, so you can see me. You can see my face now, right? Not yet. No, not yet. Okay, then it's coming. Give me a second. I can see you, Kate. <laughs> there you go. Hi, Nama. Hi. It might be hard for him to hear you, but I'll... Nama, it's far from poor. Can you hear me? I think the biggest way is. Uh, if I have a problem to, to hear your question, Kay, would you be able to repeat the question for me? Yes, I'll repeat it. It's uh, Barbara Poor from USGS. Yeah. Uh, hey, is Barbara? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> hey! <laughs> um, uh, David actually noticed that the significant, when he showed the graph of the, um, the uh, people who had experience with GIS, the significant thing was that 75% of them had one year or less. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if he was able to correlate the answers of the questionnaires about experience with his other data that might give a clue to how, it, you know, it occurs to me, maybe people who don't like GIS are better open street map, 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 map. Did you get that? <laughs> um, so, so Barbara was asking about the amount of people who had under a year experience in GIS and if you had correlated that to some of your other data and mm -hmm. whether or not OpenStreetMap was maybe more suited to people who don't like GIS because it was the people who had under a year? Yeah. Uh. I, I have not looked into that. Uh, you know, this was a part of dissertation, and you, you know, in dissertation you have to finish it first, <laughs> and then and you can because you have once you finish, you have freedom to do whatever you want to do. Now, I can I can look into some of those those things. I actually do have a lot of interest. There are a variety of things I want to explore further. Uh, but thanks, Barbara. But I have not looked into that. I'll but I have a plan. I'll email you. She's going to oh. email you. <laughs> That'd be great. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.